So you're moving to Chicago, maybe for school, maybe for work, or perhaps you just signed as a free agent with the Bulls. Whatever the case may be, this video is for you. What's good YouTube, it's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing 35 things you need to know before moving to Chicago. A little background before we get started. I was born in Chicago, grew up in Florida, and have moved back to Chicago twice in my adult life. Once for grad school and once about four years ago. For those of you who are planning to move to Chicago, first and foremost, congratulations. Second of all, I wish you all the best with your move. And third of all, welcome to Chicago. Some of the things on the list I've covered in greater detail in other videos, so I'll put the links in description below. Now let's hop right into the list. The first and perhaps most important thing to know before moving to Chicago is that it is a city of neighborhoods. I have an entire video on how to choose a neighborhood when moving to Chicago, but suffice to say, each one is unique in its own set of ways. And number two, the cost of living is gonna be a little bit higher than most places. Still not super expensive like New York, Miami, LA, or San Francisco, but definitely higher than your average town. I have an entire video on the cost of living in Chicago, which goes into great detail on my monthly budget. This one's a little more general than most of the items on this list. Bringing yourself to Chicago or any other big city for that matter can be tricky. So when I moved here for grad school, I put all my belongings in a truck and I drove cross country. But when I moved back four years ago, I did things a little bit simpler. Instead of doing all that, I just flew to O'Hare with two suitcases packed with my essentials. And every time I would go to Florida to visit my family, I would bring a little bit more. And then over the months and stuff like that, I would have stuff shipped to me. And for bigger items like couches or TVs, I just decided to buy new ones here. It wasn't worth the cost of shipping. If you're moving here, you probably already know this, but it gets very cold in Chicago. From the end of September to about mid-May, the temps can dip pretty low. We even had a polar vortex last year. But don't let that scare you because there are so many ways to prepare for winter and really take advantage of all the things that the season has to offer. Plus, the summer more than makes up for it. The city is laid out on a grid system, making it super easy to navigate. Sure, there are some exceptions, but in general, streets run north-south, east-west, and are numbered depending on how far they are from the city center, state, and Madison. Once you start learning a little bit about the grid, you'll see how simple it is, and pretty soon you'll be able to tell which direction you're going based on the numbers on the buildings. Which brings us to our next point. The lake is east. Always, and I mean always remember this, because most Chicagoans will talk in terms of the lake. For instance, if you get directions, somebody might say to you, head toward the lake and it'll be on your right. You don't necessarily need a car to live in Chicago, but if you choose to bring yours, just know that it can get complicated. First of all, rush hour traffic can make a two mile trip take 45 minutes. Second, you have to pay for things like city stickers and zone stickers and parking. It's not like smaller towns where you can just park in front of your building or in a driveway. More often than not, you're gonna have to find street parking and then walk a few blocks to your job or your home. Otherwise, you can rent garage space. You also have to worry about things like street sweeping and snow plowing. You could see pretty quickly how car ownership in Chicago gets tricky. On that same transportation note, the CTA is a robust and reliable system that can get you anywhere in the city via train or bus. We did an entire guide on the CTA, so be sure to check that one out for more information. With two international airports, O'Hare and Midway, Chicago is one of the biggest travel hubs in the United States, meaning you can fly to a lot of places pretty conveniently, and the airports are really simple to get to via public transportation. The job market here is hot, and there are so many sectors to get into. One of the strengths of the city has has always been not relying on one or two industries to keep things going. You can find jobs in technology, healthcare, law, advertising, finance, insurance, academia, architecture, and so much more. On the note of jobs, there are also many opportunities in the blue collar sector, like construction, contracting, and food service. And even though there aren't as many blue collar jobs and industries as there were in the past, we still very much consider ourselves a blue collar town. Hardworking, underdog mentality, grinding and hustling. But before you think we're all work here, there's a thriving art scene dating all the way back to the 1893 World's Fair. There are lots of art museums, art festivals, and art schools. It's a huge part of the culture for Chicagoans. Speaking of Chicagoans, you'll find that in general, people here are gonna be nicer than in other big cities. Growing up in South Florida, I was used to people in public keeping to themselves, not really being social with strangers, and sorta of unwilling to help. But in Chicago, you'll find that that's not the case. People here are more friendly 
it's probably part of those core Midwestern values. You'll also encounter a lot of tourists. Chicago gets millions of visitors per year. People taking vacations and business people in town for conventions and conferences. When I lived in Streeterville for grad school, I would constantly get people coming up to me asking for directions, tips for things to do while they were in town. Now, growing up in South Florida, I was used to seeing tourists, but definitely not on this scale. If you're coming from a smaller town, you may not be used to seeing people from all over the country and all over the world in your city. Diversity is one of the biggest strengths of Chicago. We have people from all over with different experiences and dreams. Over the years, Chicagoans have immigrated from all over the globe and all the US states, and this continues to be the case to this day. On the note of diversity, there are many ethnic enclaves in Chicago, places in the city that you can go to experience culture from the other side of the world. Devon for Indian culture, Pilsen for Mexican culture, Bronzeville for African American culture, Humble Park for Puerto Rican culture, Chinatown for Asian culture, and so much more. But let's go beyond ethnicity. There are so many other communities in Chicago, so it's easy to find a group of people that you have a shared interest with, forming a nice solid foundation for friendship. I'm talking artists, students, fitness enthusiasts, nature lovers, vegans, etc. Despite what the national media might say, Chicago is not a war zone. Sure, crime is probably a little bit higher than most of us would want, but in general, the city is safe as long as you're taking your basic precautions. Chicagoans are proud, and we don't like people disparaging our city. Sure, we complain, but we've earned that right by surviving those harsh winters, bad traffic, and giving back to the community. Being proud and boasting about our city is what earned us the nickname, the Windy City. Before we get into more things you need to know when moving to Chicago, if you're enjoying this video, finesse that like button. And of course, if you're new to my channel, subscribe to join the Gusto Gang. The city has a long and rich history, starting with the Native Americans who lived here and did so many things that helped make Chicago the city it is today. So it's nice to learn a little bit before you move here. A good starting point would be the Chicago History Museum or any of our great public libraries. Chicago is perhaps best known for being the birthplace of the modern skyscraper. You can see so many historic buildings from the late 1800s and early 1900s but it's not just old buildings that are great. I encourage you to take the architecture boat tour so you can get a good idea of all the postmodern architecture that's booming in Chicago right now. Next on our list, there's always something to do here. On any given weekend, you'll have concerts, conferences, festivals, and parades. You also have Broadway in Chicago, plus we have a thriving bar and restaurant scene. I really could go on and on. Chicago's motto is herbs and orto, meaning city in a garden. Since the early days, the city has been planned around green spaces. Every neighborhood has a park and you can find several large parks all throughout the city like Lincoln, Garfield, Washington, Douglas, and Humboldt. In addition to parks, the entire lakefront and river walk are completely open to the public. One of the few cities that save these spaces. Well, the lakefront has always been open to the public. The river walk is more of a recent project. The food here is amazing. In 2017, Bon Appetit magazine named Chicago the best restaurant city in America. You can find everything here from mom and pop joints to Michelin star restaurants. And if there's an ethnicity you can think of, good chance that you can find a restaurant that serves up that food. We're also famous for street food like Italian beefs, pizza, hot dogs, and Polish sausages. Earlier I alluded to festivals, but I definitely felt like it deserved its own place on this list because Chicago is known for amazing summer festivals. Most neighborhoods throw at least one, but others have multiple throughout the season. And at these festivals, you can listen to live music, get amazing street food, and buy stuff from local Chicago businesses. We talked about the cold weather, but also the summer can get pretty hot. Not Florida hot, but that heat can really multiply in a concrete jungle. The city is extremely walkable. I've mentioned this before, but in your neighborhood, you can walk to restaurants, bars, the pharmacy, the gym, and so much more. Now, as you get further away from the city center, it does become less walkable, but even then, it's still pretty good. Chicago has some unique vocabulary, and it wouldn't hurt to learn some of these words before you move here. We say gym shoes instead of sneakers, pop instead of soda, and expressway instead of highway or freeway. That's just to name a few. Being a huge metropolitan area, Chicago has a lot of services that smaller cities just don't get. Plus, we get things a lot faster than most people. So we have so many options for food delivery, grocery delivery, and ride sharing. Chicago is also very supportive of its small businesses. We love our homegrown talent here. Only in recent years have some of the big box corporations made some headway in the city, but we still really love our mom and pop shops. So definitely support local businesses while you're here. On top of all the amazing things to do here, Chicago is a huge sports town. 
All four major American sports are here. Football, baseball, basketball, and hockey. We also have soccer and pro softball. But aside from professional sports, there are tons of opportunities for you to join leagues and get in on the action. You can play beach volleyball at Lake Michigan or 16 inch softball, one of the city's most revered and honored traditions. We don't have a complex about New York. In general, Chicagoans don't hate New York. We don't feel inferior to New Yorkers. Personally, I have so much love for NYC and I travel there all the time. I have friends and family that live out there. Sure, back in the day, like late 18th century, early 19th century, there was a pretty bitter rivalry between the cities. But nowadays, it's just like two siblings who occasionally dog each other. Each city shines in its own way. Citizens from New York and citizens from Chicago will both tell you why their city is the best. The mayor is a big deal here. Growing up in South Florida and going to college in Gainesville, I couldn't name you one mayor that served in office while I lived there. But not only can I name you the current mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, I can name several former mayors like Richard J. Daley, Rahm Emanuel, and of course, our beloved Harold Washington. And the last thing on our list of things to know before you move to Chicago is that the near suburbs also have a lot to offer. Now don't get me wrong, I love city life and I spend 99% of my time here. But occasionally I do like going to the near suburbs like Evanston, Oak Park, and Skokie. They have their own great restaurants and things to do, plus unique landmarks that you can't see anywhere else. So keep that in mind. The touristy things in Chicago can be a lot of fun. I'm talking things like Navy Pier, Millennium Park, the Buckingham Fountain, the Skydeck Observatory, River North, Magnificent Mile, all of these things can be a lot of fun. Now maybe it's just because as a teenager I would come to visit Chicago to see my family and I would do a lot of these things, but to me they're still fun even to this day. Sure, they can be tourist traps, but if you pick and choose your times wisely, you can kind of avoid those crowds and take full advantage of all those attractions. Please remember to finesse that like button. It really does help me out a ton. And if you are new to my channel, subscribe for more videos just like this one. And in the comments below, share what you think people should know before they move to Chicago. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you know anybody that could get some use out of this video, feel free to shoot them the link. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Peace and blessings.